Welcome to Invest Ed. Welcome guys sa channel natin. So dito binabahagi ko yung 7 years of experience ko sa pagki-trade ng stocks and forex and also sa pag-invest ko sa stock market. Ang kagandahan pa dito, it's completely free. Ang gagawin niyo lang, i-subscribe at pindutin ang bell button para ma-notify kayo sa mga bagong uploads na lalabas. So kung hindi pa kayo nakaka-subscribe, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell para updated kayo sa mga videos na parating at marami pa kayo matutunan sa channel na ito. So maraming salamat! East West Banking Corporation, together with its subsidiaries, operates as a commercial bank that provides a range of financial services to individual and corporate clients in the Philippines. It operates through retail banking, corporate banking, consumer banking, and treasury and trust segments. The company offers savings, checking, time deposit, and foreign currency deposit accounts, and auto, home, salary, personal, and corporate loans. It also provides debit, credit, and prepaid cards, trust products, including fund management, investment management, custodianship, administration, collateral agency, and stock and transfer agency services and cash management services comprising payroll, disbursement, collection, liquidity management, and other services. In addition, the company offers corporate credit facilities, including working capital loans and facilities, inventory financing, guarantees, project finance, term financing, trade finance services, and receipt facility, hedging products, such as fixed income securities and foreign exchange products, and small medium enterprise banking services such as revolving credit facility, trade checking discounting line, revolving promissory note line, term loan services, non-life insurance brokerage, bank assurance, general insurance and marketing, life insurance and leasing services, as well as internet, mobile and phone banking services. As of December 31, 2019, it served customers through a network of 391 branches and 584 ATMs. The company was founded in 1994 and is headquartered in Taguig, the Philippines. Welcome to Market Performance ni East West. Nakikita natin dito, in 7 days return, up siya by 4%. And comparing to the bank industries na kinabibilangan niya, down by 1.7%. And the Philippine market, down by 0.6%. And comparing to the 1-year return of a company, EU exceeds the Philippine bank industry which returned a 34% down over the past year and comparing to the market, uh, the company exceeds the Philippine market which returned a negative 24.8% over the past year. And this is the price to earnings ratio of a company. Comparing to the industry, EU is a good value based on its PE ratio compared to the Philippine bank industries na mayroong average na 5.3 while the PE ratio of a company na sa 2.6 and comparing to the market uh, the company is a good value base on its PE ratio compared to the Philippine market down uh, na mayroong 13 PE ratio ang company ay mayroong 2.6 okay in terms of price to book ratio of a company nakikita natin dito versus the industries the company is a good value based on its PE ratio compared to the Philippine industries na mayroong 0.6 average and yung company mayroong 0.4 and the market ay mayroong 1. Kasi so, nangangahulugan nito no in terms of price to book ratio alone it is considered a undervalue as performance of the company over the past 5 years. Nakikita natin dito historically yung kanilang annual earnings growth ay mayroong 23.6 uh, 23.9% and this is the earnings and revenue history ng company. Nakikita natin dito in December 31, 2013, mayroon siyang revenue na 10 billion pesos per year, earnings na 2 billion pesos per year and net profit margin or profit margin na 20.4%. And fast forward to 2020, June 30, 2020, mayroon na silang revenue na 26 uh, billion pesos per year, earnings na uh, 7.9 billion pesos per year and 30.7% profit margin. Okay, so in terms of quality of earnings, nasa red pag tayo sa kanya because 
uh, the company has a high level of non-cash earnings. So yung non-cash earnings, ito yung ito yung any reported profit that are not backed by cash which the company has received, okay? So yun yung napansin natin sa kanya no. And in terms of growing profit margin naman natin sa kanya, nasa red uh, green flag naman tayo sa kanya because the company current net profit margin are higher than last year na mayroong 23.3% and now mayroon na mayroon ng 30.7% profit margin. And this the return on equity ng company. Nakikita natin dito mayroon siyang 14.8% return on equity and comparing to the industries mayroong 9.6%. Kasi sa mga hindi nakakaalam no kung ano yung return on equity, ito yung basehan natin ng management efficiently efficiency no kung gaano kagaling yung management to handle others people's money so ang gusto ko nating makita ta, sa return on equity 10% it is considered a good return on equity pag high ROI naman o return on equity gusto nating makita kapag high ROI ay nasa nasa 20% yung it is considered a high ROI uh, ngayon no nakikita natin dito kanyang return on equity ay nasa 14.8% it is considered good return on equity compared sa kanyang industries na meron lang 9.6%. And also no, this is the return on asset ng company. Nakikita natin dito na uh, meron siyang 2.1% while the industries ay meron lang 1.1%. So yung meaning nitong return on assets, ito yung kita ng company compared sa kanyang mga arerian. And this is the balance sheet snapshot of the company. O sa dumaya ko na tayo sa financial health ng company. Papapansin natin na kapag nagre-review tayo ng company, ng banking sectors, iba yung ating sa financial health, sa financial position, iba yung kinukuha nating metrics. Kasi, uh, iba, iba sila, no? Doon sa mga usual or usual businesses. Okay? So, una, pagdating sa asset level. So, nasa green flag tayo sa kanya in terms of asset level because... The company asset to equity ratio ay merong lang 7 times it is considered low. Okay? So bakit natin nasabi na low yung kanyang asset level? Because ang gusto natin makita kapag nag-analyze tayo sa kanyang asset to equity ratio ay nasa 10 times pababa yung kanyang asset level. It is considered a good asset to equity ratio. So yung meaning nito no sa mga hindi pa nakakaalam ng asset to equity ratio it's measures of how much company is financing through its operation through debt versus their wholly owned fund. Meaning ito, the higher the ratio, the more the company uses a debt no, to finance their operations. So kapag mas mataas sa 10, ibig sabihin nun, mas malaki yung kanyang ginagamit na utang sa operation kisa sa kanyang wholly owned fund. Okay, yun lamang yun. In terms of allowance for bad loans, nasa red flag tayo sa kanya because uh, the company has a low allowance for bad loans na mayroon lang 88%. Ang gusto kasi natin makita sa lo, uh, allowance for bad loans sa company na ina-analyze natin, sa banking sectors na ina-analyze natin ay ay nasa 100 pataas yung allowance for bad loans natin. So nakikita natin dito, yung kanyang allowance for bad loans lang ay nasa 88%. So yung meaning nitong allowance for bad loans, no, para mas lalo nating maintindihan, so ito yung a reserve to account for possible future losses from loans. So meaning, kap a higher the allowance for bad loans, uh, the bank can withstand for a future losses, no? Okay, now in terms of low risk liabilities, nasa green flag din tayo sa kanya because uh, the company merong 9 of liabilities are made up of primarily low risk sources of funding. So yung low risk sources of funding, ito yung, ito yung mga customer deposits, no? So yun, ito yung customer deposits, no? which is less risky than borrowing externally. Kaya natin nasabi na low risk sources of funding. O in terms of loan level, nasa green flag din tayo sa kanya because the company has an appropriate level of loan to asset ratio na mayroong 64%. So bakit natin nasabi na appropriate yung kanyang loan to asset ratio? Because uh, a loan to asset ratio below 110%, it is considered an ap appropriate. It is considered appropriate loan to asset ratio, no? So, para mas lalo nating maintindihan, ano ba tong loan to asset ratio? So, ito yung measures of 
bank outstanding loans to its total assets. High loans to asset ratio could mean high risk because loan loan are more liquid than other financial assets. Okay? And in terms of low risk deposit na sa green flag din tayo sa kanya because the company loans to deposit ratio ay merong 82%. It is considered appropriate. So bakit natin nasabi na appropriate? Because a loan to deposit ratio of 125% below, it is considered a low risk deposit. Okay? So ano nga ba tong loan to deposit ratio para mas lalo nating maintindihan din? Uh, ang meaning lang nito, ito yung bank liquidity. Kinocompare lang dito yung total loans to total deposits. Okay? And in terms of level for bad loans, nasa rent bag tayo sa kanya because the company has a high level of bad loans na mayroong 5.2%. So, sobrang laki na kanyang bad loans, no? Ang gusto kasi natin makita kapag nag-analyze tayo na kanyang level of bad loans ay nasa 2% percent below lang yung kanyang level, level of bad loans. Pero dito nakikita natin na nasa 5.2% yung kanyang level of bad loans. So, sobrang laki na kanyang level of bad loans. Mga nangungutang sa banko na hindi na talaga nababayaran yung kanilang utang. No? So, nakikita natin dito na meron siyang 5.2%. So, sobrang laki niyan. Okay? Also, in terms of dividend ni... Uh, na camp, uh, in terms of dividend na company, nakikita natin dito ngayon na wala silang binibigay na dividendo. No? Okay? And it's the stability growth payments of the company. Nakikita natin dito, in June 14, 20, uh, 2012, meron silang 10.7% a percent dividend yield and merong dividend per share na 1.7 uh, dividend per share and fast forward to 2020 nakita natin na wala na silang binibigay October 10, 2020 yung last bigay na nila ng dividendo noong March 20, 2017 pa na merong 1.6 Uh, dividend, per share, dividend yield and dividend per share na 0.22 pesos dividend per share. Okay? So in terms of uh, stable dividend, nasa red flag na tayo sa kanya kasi hindi na nagbibigay ng dividendo. Growing dividend, nasa red flag din tayo sa kanya kasi hindi na nagbibigay ng dividendo. Okay, now this the leadership team of a company. No, nakikita natin dito yung kanilang vice chairman na si Antonio Moncupa na merong 13.75 years and ownership sa company na 13. 0.30% and nagkakahalaga ng 61.3 million pesos and this is the rest of leadership ng company and in terms of experience management nasa green pag tayo sa kanya because the company management team is considered experienced na mayroon 2.2 years average tenure and average age na 54 years old and in terms of board member no, okay nakikita din natin yung mga board members ng company okay So in terms of experienced board member, nakikita natin dito na nasa green flag din tayo sa kanya because the company board of directors are considered experienced na mayroong 4.5 average tenure. So yung board of directors, yung pangunahin itong kunin nila ay pangalagaan yung kapakanan ng mga shareholders na company. And this is the ownership breakdown ng company. Nakikita natin dito, 77.9% owned by private companies, 16.8% owned by general public, 3.2% owned by institution, 2.2% on, owned by individual insiders. So in terms of dilution of shares, so nasa green flag tayo sa kanya because shareholders have not been meaningfully diluted in past year. So sa mga hindi nakaalam no, kung ano ng diluted shares, so kapag nag-i-issue, nag-raise ng shares yung company, uh, bumababa yung ownership percentage ng mga shareholders na company. Okay? And this is the top shareholders na company. No? Nakikita natin dito, 77.85% owned by AL Nom Incorporated na merong current value na 16.1 billion pesos and 1.31% owned by Charles Schwab Investment Management Incorporated na merong 271.4 million pesos. Okay, and this is the rest of top shareholders na company. And this is the number of employees na company. As of June 30, 2020, meron silang 7,200 employees. Okay? Okay, so alam na natin no, kung anong meron sa company. Alam na natin kung uh, ano yung financial position ng company ngayon. Ngayon, dumako na tayo sa intrinsic value ng company. Okay, so kailangan muna natin ng forecasted net income ng company. 
Okay, so yung nahanap natin na uh, forecasted net income ng company, no? in 2020, mayroon silang forecasted na 5.6 billion, 5 billion pesos net income forecasted. Okay, so sa mga ibang sources na pinagkukunan natin, no? wala, wala tayong mahanap. So, siya lang yung mayroong forecasted net income sa company. So, mayroon siyang 5.6 billion net income. Okay, alam na natin kung ano yung forecasted net income ng company. Now, ang susunod natin kukunan yung Uh, P.E. ratio ng company for the past 5 years. Okay guys, so welcome sa BPI 10. Nakikita natin dito yung kanyang P.E. ratio for the past 5 years. no? So, i-average lang natin to para makuha yung kanyang P.E. ratio na magamit natin. Okay, so yung average P.E. ratio ng company for the past 5 years ay nasa 6.3. So, ito yung kukunin natin no, para makuha yung kanyang future market capitalization ng company. So, para makuha yung future market capitalization ng company, so yung nakuha natin P.E. ratio, ta times lang natin siya dito sa ating future net income ng company. Kasi yung future market capitalization ng company ay nasa 35.4 billion pesos. Okay, na alam na natin yung future market capitalization ng company. Ngayon, titignan natin dito yung kanyang current market cap. Okay, nasa writers.com tayo. No? So, nakikita natin dito yung kanyang current market cap ay nasa 20.6 billion pesos uh, market cap. So, ito, itong current market cap, di-divide natin siya doon sa ating future market capitalization para makuha natin intrinsic value ng company. Okay, so yung ating nakuha ay nasa 0.58. Okay, no? So, ang gagawin natin, yung ating current market price ni East West ngayon, uh, ni, ni EO, ay nasa 9.20 per share. So, ang gagawin natin, i-divide natin itong current price dito sa atin nakuha para makuha yung intrinsic value ng company. Okay, so yung ating intrinsic value kay East West ngayon ay nasa 15.86. Okay? So, nakuha na natin, alam na natin yung intrinsic value ng company. Ngayon, magkakaroon tayo ng margin of safety sa kanya. So, para makuha yung margin of safety ng company, kailangan natin siya i-time sa 0.80. Para makuha yung 20% margin of safety natin. So, ibig sabihin, nasa 12.69, o nasa 12.69 kung na-round off natin to, no? Yung kanyang margin of safety. Sa marina na pag-aaral natin sa intrinsic value ng East-West. So, yung ating intrinsic value na kuha sa kanya ay nasa 15.86. So, yung ating margin of safety sa kanya ay nasa 12.69. So, meaning, kapag yung presyo ay nasa margin of safety or below margin of safety, it is considered by rating sa loan in terms of intrinsic value. So, nung time na ina-analyze natin siya, ay yung kanyang current price ay nasa 9.20 pesos per share and kung titignan natin, no, nasa below siya ng margin of safety kaya yung ating position sa kanya ay nasa buy rating size sa kanya in terms of intrinsic value alone. And meron tayong potential upside na 42%. Okay? Kapag na-reach niya yung 15.86% Uh, na, na ating intrinsic value sa kanya. So, yung potential upside niya ay mayroong 42%. Okay? O, so, yung summary na pag-aaral natin sa company na to, no? Yung nakita nating red zone ay there's a high level of non-cash earnings and nakita naman yung green zone sa kanya. The company is currently profitable. Earnings have grown by 23.9% per year over the past 5 years. Share price has been stable over the past 3 months. Profit margin improve or uh, the company became profitable. At least 3 years of financial data is available. No concerning event detected. Shareholders have not been meaningfully diluted in past year or recently. Revenue is meaningful. Market cap is meaningful. Okay, so pag -re review at pag-analyze ng stocks, magkakaroon tayo ng idea kung anong meron sa company. Makikita natin kung ano yung uh, strength and weaknesses na company. And also, sa pag -re review ng stocks, magkakaroon tayo ng matibay na konklusyon at matibay na pundasyon sa pag-i-invest natin sa stock market. At hindi lang tayo basta-basta pasok sa company na gusto natin pag-investan. Kasi napaka-importante na alam natin no, kung ano yung intrinsic value ng company at anong presyo tayo bibili sa kanya. And, and sabi nga also ni Warren Buffett, Price is what you pay, value is what you get. And also, dapat naiintindihan mo kung ano yung kinokontribute ng company sa ekonomiya. Alam mo kung ano yung vision, mission na company. And also, dapat naiintindihan mo no, kung ano yung meron sa company. Kasi kung di mo naiintindihan, sabi nga ni also ni Warren Buffett na... Uh, you have to stay to your circle of competence. So, so ito lang muna guys yung ating review sa company na to. And as always guys, uh, invest wisely and see you on the other side.
Hello guys, maraming salamat sa panonood. Sana marami kayo natutunan sa video na to. So kung hindi pa kayo nakaka-subscribe, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell para updated kayo sa mga videos na parating at marami pa kayo matutunan sa channel na ito. So maraming salamat. This is PSE Warrior saying, trade well, trade strong, and trade smart.